hello guys welcome back to my channel it is Ola Inka for Labi here in the building I am a biomedical scientist based in the United Kingdom on my channel I share about how you can relocate from overseas to the United Kingdom as a biomedical scientist or medical laboratory scientist I'm originally from Nigeria so if you are new to my channel I relocated um, last year September to the United Kingdom and I work as a biomedical scientist with the NHS Wow if you are interested in going through this pathway or also coming overseas to work excuse me please also coming to United Kingdom to work from overseas you are welcome to my channel if you are here to do this please subscribe to my channel click the bell notification icon to get notified each time I upload a new video yes don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section below like my videos share my videos and recommend my videos to your friends yeah before I go into today's video, I would like to apologize, guys. I'm so sorry. I've been away for a while. I've been so cool and busy. I'm so sorry. And I actually just came back from a shift, weekend shift. And um, I just thought, let me, while on the shift, I was like, I really need to make a video today. And here I am. Guys, yeah, this is one of the responsibilities of a biomedical scientist. You should be able to cover on call duty she be able to work during weekend shifts and i believe this is one of the, the skills or qualities you possess and um it should appear in your application you're able to do on call hours you're able to work during weekend you're able to cover shifts and all of that yes you you, you are flexible you have a flexible um, attitude towards work and if there's need for you to cover shifts you do that for example i was actually supposed to work um to do a late shift yesterday but because there's need to like um cover so many people were on leave and some people were not around i decided to start my shift early so that's that's an important um skill or attribute and if your employer sees that in your application they it is 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 a very important it's, not everybody is willing to do that do you know some people once it's not their shift, they can't take up extra shifts. They can't, um, they are not flexible and all of that. Of course, I understand some people have got family, they've got other commitments. So, yeah, don't let me digress. Yeah. So, in today's video, I would like to talk about how to write your NHS job application. Now, I know I've talked about it several times and um from the content of my demo from the dms and the messages i get i can still see that so many people are still stopped or they really don't know what to do so i'll just be saying it this way because i really want you guys to have the best application ever now this is the first thing i would like to say believe in yourself believe in yourself once you have decided that okay um, I would like to take my career forward. I want to go to the United Kingdom. I want to work in the United Kingdom as a biomedical scientist. Believe that it is what you can achieve. So you need to like believe in yourself. You don't have to go about listening to, oh, it's difficult for people to get jobs from Nigeria. It's so difficult for people to get jobs from overseas. See, NHS, they already have it in, I think, their budget or something they employ people from overseas it's not a new thing with the nhs in my trust if i count the number of nigerians that day you'll be wowed so believe in you and i'm sure that will be applicable to other trusts or other organizations too it is and it is possible if i had believed in ah it's difficult for people you know what sometimes that one person you see for example me just believe that if a lanka can do it i can do it um, I'll be mentioning, um, and the lady's name is Christy, and I think she's Christy Speaks on YouTube, if I'm correct. You know, when I saw her story about getting a, a multiple interview in about three, within three weeks of, a, 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 um, of registration, I was motivated, even though I did not get any invite till about four months of my registration, but I was motivated, like, that one person is enough. That one person is enough. So believe you can do it. Number two, one thing I would like you to do is, 
if you are if you have not yet applied if you are probably in the process of your registration or you have applied this is applicable to everyone start this way before you even start applying for jobs you need to like open accounts you need to open account with track jobs and open an account with indeed and open an account with nhs jobs and every other job site you know about also you can make use of linkedin as another avenue to get your job now open an account once you open an account you need to have some things handy <clears throat> One of the things you need to have, of course, you've got some things already. You've got your degree, certificate, and all of that. One of the things you need to have handy is a job experience. A UK standard job experience. Now, you'll be wondering, how do I write my job experience um, or work experience or job description? Sorry about that. How do I write it? It's simple. If you, don't, you can browse and... Um, um, UK job uh, UK job description for biomedical scientists. Just browse it online. Another way to get a job description is to just go on any advert that is in line of your specialty. Download it. You see how a UK job experience looks like for biomedical scientists. Now you know what you do, or what is expected of you to do as a medical laboratory scientist or a biomedical scientist where you work. Use all these documents and all of these things you've gathered use it as a template to write your job experience now many people have advised that you should let your job experience be specialty specific especially when you're writing um if, if especially when you're applying to the nhs for the first time like what i mean is you've not worked with the nhs before you've not worked in a uk setting before as a biomedical scientist so let your job experience be specialty based now for most of us apart from clinical postings of course if for any reason you want to include clinical postings so as to boost your years of experience you can do that so some people don't do that it's, it is a plus for you you can do that you, you might want to add your um clinical postings but of course we're adding clinical postings then you might need to maybe talk about more about the specialty you're trying to apply for and just briefly mention some things you do in other specialties because well you might not even mention it because even students here when they come for um when people are doing their portfolio and all of that they are actually in a particular department but and um, they also go for example someone that that is doing a portfolio or just about to end that portfolio she has been in hematology for long but I, I noticed that there was a particular week she rotated other department just one day, just to know what goes on in other departments. Just like they used to tell us in Nigeria, like you are not just um, a medical laboratory scientist in your area of specialty, you are a medical laboratory scientist generally. But in the UK, they are more specialty specific. You understand what I mean? So even if you are writing your clinical posting as a student, focus on that specialty. For example, just focus on your posting in hematology. So they will know you've been doing a lot of hematology stuff right from your school days. It will boost your work experience. Now from that, you go to your internship. During internship, we do rotation, but just focus on one specialty. Then after that, um, you move ahead to your NYSC. You don't necessarily have to write as NYSC because in the UK, they may not even know what NYSC is. Just write it as um, maybe medical laboratory scientist. Or in my own, the way I wrote my own, my internship was intern medical laboratory scientist. Then my NYC was training medical laboratory scientist. Let your um job experience or your work experience let let there be a progression. Even if you did your if everywhere you have worked in your life is one place, except you have just one single um year of experience. Let there be a progression. Like for example, intern medical laboratory scientist this year to this year. Let your job description as an intern be as let it look like what it should be then as you are moving forward let it reflect that okay you've got more responsibilities you you, you tend to do more things and all of that yeah so you need to have your work experience and another thing you need to have and is have recent cpds there are many cpds you can do online you can just browse online but i know of the amsin cpd so I've got a video on that. If you don't know, if you've not seen the video, please go and watch the video. So you can do free AMSIN CPDs. Then 
Another thing you can add on as a CPD are trainings you've gone for. For example, I remember going for um, um, sickle cell screening, newborn um, sickle cell screening in Lagos State. That was in 2022. I went for the training and I added it to my CPD. So any training or seminar you've gone for is can as well pass as a CPD. So you need to have recent CPD because they believe in training and training even the managers are going for training everyone goes for training you update your training yeah after that you need to have a supporting information now it's not complex i know it's you might feel oh how do i write it how do i write it i've done a video that's just the template so have a template andy the next thing i want to say is if you are applying for a job, ensure you go through the job adverts. No two jobs are the same. No two jobs are the same. Each advert will have um, a criteria they are expecting from you. What is the qualification they are expecting from you? The skills they are exper expecting from you. Everything they are expecting from you will be in the advert. So you need to like sit down and go through the adverts. And one beautiful thing about the UK is, for example, when we are doing our competency assessment, they expect you to make use of the SOP to write your answers. It's just like, let me say it in a layman language, but we don't do it in Nigeria. But if you can remember, for those that went to Ladoke Akutala University of Technology, we used to have a manual, MLSCM manual, during our posting that says, okay, you should maybe thin film. It will show a part where you did it, you watched, you observed, you did it under supervision and you did it without supervision, something like that. So we've got a kind of um, competency um, booklet for each procedure. Then we also have questions. What we don't have back in that MLSA manual is we don't have questions. So apart from proving that you've been taught, you've gone through the SOP and all of that, you also have questions to answer. So those questions, we make use of SOP to answer. So no employer will crucify you for using the adverts to write your application. Basically, you need to prove that you fit into that rule. You need to prove that you've got all the skills and qualities as stated in the rule. So each time you see a job advert, you feel like, okay, first check, do I meet the criteria? Once you meet the essential criteria, you are good to go. You may or may not meet the desirable criteria. Desirable means it's desirable, like we would like you to have it, but if you don't have it, it's fine. For example, um, the desirable criteria for my own job role is that I should have at least one year UK experience, one year, one year UK experience which I did not have. It's, it's a desirable criteria, not an essential criteria. One of the essential criteria in, includes being HCPC registered, having a biomedical science or equivalent degree. So you need to like go through the advert, prove how so many, so many of us have everything. See, your SI does not have to be so worthy. You get what I mean? So prove that you've got all those things. Prove that you've got all those things. And don't forget to mention in the content of your supporting information, don't forget to mention the trust values show how you prove those values you can even start your application by talking about the values or mention it somewhere show how you prove show how if for example if, for example one of our trust values is patient attacks show how you put the patient attacks show how you you care for the patient how the patient's welfare and um, everything is at the center of what you do creative collaboration is another trust value in my trust Show how you are readily, um, how you readily collaborate with your colleagues, the team, and you tell them that you are a good team player. You play your parts. You don't you don't leave lapses and all of that. Just talk about the values. Talk about the values. Then you can also mention the NHS values generally. Compassion and all of that. Patient that has the NHS values, you can also mention it. But there's a way you just use all of those things. Write it in a in a way that will be suiting. Do you understand what I mean? So 
that is why you understand that no two adverts are the same. No two adverts are the same. So ensure that you sit with your application. See, sometimes you don't, it's good that you apply in so many places, but let each application know that you've done your best. See it as a job. Yeah, see it as, as, see it as a project. Do you understand? So let your application be unique. Work on your application. Don't do copy and paste. Don't see, even if you pay someone to write your application for you, the truth of the matter is that because no two applications are the same, you can't keep on using that. You really need to like keep working and fine tuning your application, fine tuning your application, fine tuning your application. Yeah, so I believe that these few things are with these few things I've mentioned, you are going to do well in your next application. You are going to work on your application. Yes. Now I would like to say this. It is one thing. To get an interview invite is another thing to get the job offer start preparing see this uk and journey as a as a project so start investing in yourself start reading read about quality management system there, there, there's a document online you can download about quality management system just go online download quality management system read about it read about audits read about quality control Read about um, documentation, every aspect of um, um, of 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 quality management system. Just read about those things. Start preparing. Read about the United Kingdom Accreditation Service. That's UCAS. Read about them. Read about your own specialty. If you are in hematology, you should be watching videos on um, blood group discrepancies. Videos on um antibody titration, antibody screening, all of those videos you should be watching, you should be reading. Watch videos and read about anemia, leukemia, you should be able to interpret different results. Read about, um, read about disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, read about D-dimer, all of those things. Just read, be grounded, be prepared ahead. As you are planning for, um, as you are writing your application, also prepare ahead for your interview. Don't wait for the interview to come before you prepare for your interview. Now, lastly, um, I don't know if I've said lastly before. Lastly, let me end it with this. Once you get an interview invite, please go back to the advert. Read through the job description, the person specification. Read about the trust. Read about the trust values, read about the analyzers or anything. I think there's a way you can even do download their pathology documents so that you'll be able to see the analyzers they are using in that hospital. Read about it, go online. You can even watch videos on YouTube or even search. If you don't even see a video, you can search, for example, you can search about Sysmex XN series analyzer. You'll be able to even see the Sysmex leaflets, you'll be able to know how they are. You know the principle that guides the working of the analyzer. Even the one you use in your own laboratory. Know the principle. Because if, for example, they ask a question about the principle of their own analyzer, if you don't know, you can decide to say, sorry, um, I don't know the principle of the analyzer you use, depending on how you've written your supporting information or application. Can I mention the principle of the analyzer I've used? I think I was asked the question and I had to mention what I have done. Know what they do. Do you understand? Of course, they've got similar principles, and so whatever you mention would most likely be similar with how their own analyzer works too. So do your best. Just go back to the application, read, and I'm sure you're going to get the job offer. You're going to get the job offer. So, guys, we have come to the end of today's video. See you in my next video. Is a bye from your girl Olaika Falabi. Bye.